has it ever occurred to you, the old lady went on, how much we go by what is called, I believe, the context. There's a place on Dartmoor called Grey Weathers. If you are talking to a farmer there and mention Grey Weathers, he would probably conclude that you are speaking of these stone circles. Yet it's possible that you might be speaking of the atmosphere. And in the same way, if you were meaning the stone circles, an outsider hearing a fragment of the conversation might think you meant the weather. So when we repeat a conversation, we don't, as a form, repeat the actual words. We put in some other words that seem to us to mean exactly the same thing. I saw both the cook and Dorothy separately. I asked the cook if she was quite sure that her master had really mentioned a heap of fish. She said she was quite sure. Were these his exact words, I asked? Or did he mention some particular kind of fish? That's it, said the cook. It was some particular kind of fish. But I can't remember what now. A heap of... uh, Now, what was it? Not any of the fish you sent to table... Would it be a perch now? Or pike? No, it didn't begin with a P. Dorothy also recalled that her master had mentioned some special kind of fish. Some outlandish kind of fish it was, she said. A pile of... uh... Oh, now what was it? Did he say heap or pile, I asked. I think he said pile, but there I really can't be sure. It's so hard to remember the actual words, isn't it, miss? Especially when they don't seem to make sense. But now I come to think of it. I'm pretty sure it was a pile, and the fish began with C. But it wasn't a cod or a crayfish. The next part is where I'm really proud of myself, said Miss Marple. Because, of course, I didn't know anything about drugs. Nasty, dangerous things, I call them. I've got an old recipe of my grandmother's for tansy tea that's worth any amount of your drugs. But I knew that there were several medical volumes in the house, and in one of them there was an index of drugs. You see, my idea was Jeffrey had taken some particular poison and was trying to say the name of it. Well, I looked on the list of H's, beginning H-E. Nothing there that sounded likely. Then I began on the P's. And almost at once I came to, what do you think? She looked round, postponing her moment of triumph. Pilocarpine. Can't you understand a man who could hardly speak trying to drag that word out? What would that sound like to a cook who had never heard the word? Would it convey the impression, pile of carp? By Jove, said Sir Henry. I should never have hit upon that, said Dr. Pender. Most interesting, said Mr. Petherick. Really, most interesting. I turned quickly to the page indicated in the index. I read about pilocarpine and its effect on the eyes, and other things that didn't seem to have any bearing on the case. But at last I came to a most significant phrase. Has been tried with success as an antidote for atropine poisoning. <laughs>